Now, sometimes there is going to be what we call intra-group trading, and I'm going to conclude on that. Intra-group trading. This is one of the challenging aspects also for many students. So make sure you get the principles I'm about to talk about. Now, so you can leave some space here. I'm not done here, but I need to talk about this because there is something we need to bring here. When we talk about intra-group trading, it could take two forms. One, it could be either somebody is selling an asset to another person or somebody is selling goods to another person. Number one, if it is their subsidiary selling goods to the parent, then, and at the end of the year, the parent still has some of the goods in store, then we need to calculate what we call provision for unrealized profit. So please note that provision for unrealized profit is always calculated on unsold goods on unsold goods from the related party. Unsold goods. So if the subsidiary sells to the parent, then the provision for realized profit we will calculate must come under what? The next asset. If it is the subsidiary selling to the parent. So we could bring PUP here, provision for realized profit. And that one will always come to the year end. Now, why is it called provision for realized profit? If the subsidiary has sold to the parent and the parent has not finished selling all of them, that means in the closing inventory of the parent, they have the inventory there. But according to IAS2, inventory should be carried at what? Lower of cost or net realizable value. So they are carrying the assets or the inventory at what? The selling price. When they should have ca uh, carried it at what? The cost price. For that reason, we need to calculate what? The provision for realized profit. It is that provision for realized profit that we bring here if it is the subsidiary selling to the parent. Me voucher, when you're pro forma, Nemo, if the parent is the one selling, you don't bring it here. You don't bring it here. If it is when the subsidiary is selling that you bring the PUP here. If the parent is the one selling, it goes somewhere else. Group retain earnings. So what then is the double entry for provision for realized profits? We're going to be debiting cost of sales. Now when we say debit cost of sales, it simply means you add it to cost of sales and then you credit your inventory, meaning you subtract it from the inventory value in the balance sheet. So this is statement of financial position issue, and this is statement of profit or loss issue. Now, this double entry is irrespective of who is selling. We will still take it to what? The cost of sales subtracted from the inventory. Now, if it is a parent selling to the subsidiary, if it is the parent selling to the subsidiary, then the provision for unrealized profit will be taken to group retain end. Will be taken to group retain end. So in effect, what does that mean? You do this entry, that is the debit cost of sales if you are preparing statement of financial position. But if you are preparing, sorry, statement of profit or loss. But if you are preparing the statement of financial position, then you will debit either group retained earnings or subsidiaries profit and credit Inventory, as I mentioned here. This is what you, have, you must understand about P, 
you be. If, you, if the parent is the one selling, please don't be tempted. Because remember what I did here. Net asset of sub and sub. Sub and sub. You don't bring parent issue here. Then the standard says that if you are preparing the statement of profit or loss, there is a way you must treat the actual sales. The statement of profit or loss. The group statement of profit or loss. The actual sales figure must be cancelled out. The actual sales figure must be cancelled out. What does that mean? It means debit revenue, meaning deducts the actual total sales, actual total sales from revenue and deduct it from where? Cost of sales. This is very important. So if you are preparing a statement of profit or loss, the total sales now, yeah, not only the one outstanding, but the total actual sales figure, you deduct it from revenue, deduct it from cost of sales. When yes. Okay. Whether who, whoever is selling to who, the actual total sales, you deduct it from revenue, deduct it from cost of sales. Then the final thing. If you are preparing a statement of financial position, you may have what we call the current account. What do we mean by the current account? It is simply the account between the parent and what? The subsidiary. Now, I'm going to make an assumption here, and I'm going to use that to tell you the principle so that you get it. Let's say the parent is selling to the sub. If the parent is the one selling to the sub, then in the books of the parent, they will have what? If the parent is the one selling to the sub, then who is having going, who is going to have trade receivables and who is going to have trade payables? Okay. Good. Listen carefully. At the end of the day, we must cancel out. The rule is that nobody should owe somebody in consolidation because we are a single company. So if I owe you and you owe me, when we are preparing the consolidation, we need to what? Subtract the effect of it. But how do we go about it? Sometimes the account will not be the same. Why, why wouldn't it be the same? So the parent thinks the subsidiary owes them 2000 in the, in the subsidiary books, they think they owe the parent 500 Why is that so? It could be so because of two reasons. And that is goods in transit and then cash in transit. Goods in transit, cash in transit. Goods in transit means the, the seller has sent some goods to the buyer, but the buyer hadn't received the goods as at the year end. For that reason, the buyer is going to have a bigger figure than what? The seller. If there is goods in transit, you force it into the account of the person who is supposed to receive it. What does that mean? It means if I put my pro forma up and I write inventory, I'll bring the parents, I'll bring the subsidiaries, then I will add what? Goods in transit. Are you getting the picture? I will add it. Because anyway, closing inventory move. And in any way, closing inventory move into a best for sale into the account. So we add it. Cash in transit means the buyer has sent some money to the seller. But as at the end of the year, the seller hadn't what? Received the money. That is why there is a difference. For that reason, we force the cash also what? Into the account of the receiver. So when we come to cash or bank, we bring the parent, we bring the subsidiary, then we're going to be what? Adding the cash in transit. Remember, this inventory here, after adding goods in transit, we will subtract PUP. That's what I mentioned here, credit inventory. 
you subtract the provision for unrealized profit. This is what you have to understand. Now, this will now make you to adjust the two accounts. And what you will get now is what you use to deduct in trade receivable and trade payable in the consolidated financial statements. Any question on intra-group trading? Another uh, statement of profit or loss? Or loss. Actual. So actual total sales figure must be cancelled out. All right. Is it? A great explanation. Okay. <laughs> now, okay, can, can you explain the the, the last one? Yeah, the statement of okay. I was saying that in the statement of financial position, we need to prepare a current account, which is the person who is selling and the person who is buying. Okay. Any owing must be cancelled out. Mm -hmm. Nobody should owe somebody. So how do we do that? Then I'm using a, uh, an example that the parent is selling to the sub. So in the parents' book, they have as part of their trade receivables what they, the sub will give them. And then in the sub's book, as part of their trade payable, they have what they will pay to their parents. But chances are they are not going to be the same figure. If they were the same, then we would just deduct them respectively. In the statement of financial position under trade receivable and under trade payable, we would deduct this, that same figure. Why wouldn't they be the same? Because of two reasons. Goods in transit, cash in transit. So what is the goods in transit? This is where the seller, that is the parent, has sent some goods to the subsidiary, but he hasn't received the goods as of the time the financial statement are being what? prepared. For that reason, his figure is more than what? His figure. Now remember, the inventory is no more part of the parent, and no swap, and no part of the subsidiary. So what do we do? We force it in and add it back to what? The inventories. The subsidiary. Of the, of the subsidiary. But who's there? Because we are doing consolidation in Tinu, you just bring the parent and the sub, then you just add. Are you getting it? Then, it could also be cash in transit. Meaning, the reason why my figure is less than yours is because I've paid you the money. But check, you know, and buy it. For that reason, we will force the cash also what? into the cash. So we bring parent sub, and then what? We bring cash. But remember something. PUP is calculated on unsold goods from the related what? party. So if there is goods in transit, it means we've not sold it yet. For that reason, the PUP will have to be what? Calculated as well on the goods in transit. And that is what you deduct from the value of inventory to get it. Group inventory value. The, uh, the PUP have calculated already. No, so the PUP can be on two things. PUP can be on the goods they already have in store, which they've not sold, plus the goods we have sent them, which is in transit. I'll be getting the treatment. So meaning it to be on two because the two need you know, someone toy. The award of of coffee is any there who are sending among. So that is the idea about that. Now, so these are principles. When we are solving questions, you will see that, oh, okay, 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 making sense, it making sense, it makes sense. You realize that it will make sense. Then, what else can come? Ah, we don't know. Maybe something else could come. Um, there could be other issues. So I'm just going to put others here. Okay? I'm just going to put others here. So I finish my statement. So I add. I add. I add. I add, and that's the net asset. So please note that the treatment of the intergroup trading is dependent on the kind of financial statement you are preparing. Now, even if it is cash flow, there is a different way we're going to go about it, but it follows the same idea, and we're going to be doing the adjustment when we get there. Please note that the net asset at acquisition is used to calculate goodwill. So the net asset at acquisition, this one, we use it to calculate the goodwill. All the time. At acquisition, we use it to calculate goodwill. All the time. Then the difference between the year start and year end, or at acquisition at year end, is called post-acquisition or profit or loss. Post-acquisition profit or loss. And that will be used in group retainer earnings and NCI.
Now be used in group retain areas and NCI. So this is the second principle you have to understand about consolidation. Any question? And I'm ending on this today here. Yeah? Next week, I will add the rest of them. Then we start crunching some numbers.